Dean Radin was one of those little kids you read about, a prodigy at music, math, and science with an insatiable desire to know everything. It was inevitable that he would want to know the answers to the big questions, such as what is the thing that motivates and binds all of life together? In searching for the answer, he began exploring what is known as entanglement theory and the quantum mind. Yes. Okay, so it's, it's important to, to uh, separate the leading edge of mainstream physics versus what I do. Yes, okay. So what I've done is, do is, is take what we know from mainstream physics and take one additional leap of faith, which is to, to simply guess that there's something about mind which is non-local as well. There's something about knowledge and observation which changes how quantum behavior works. So if mind is in fact non-local, you should be able to ask somebody to gain information out of a a quantum double slit experiment and cause the system to behave differently when you're looking at it with your mind's eye than when you're not. And so that's the experiment that I'm doing. This is not mainstream yet. Yes. In the sense that I can easily publish it in a mainstream journal, but it is a science experiment and it's, it can be done in a scientific way. And the results strongly suggest that the non-local mind does exist and it does have the capability of gaining information at a distance. And as a result, by observing a system with your mind's eye, you can affect it. Now you're affecting it in two ways. One is you're gaining knowledge from it, but in the quantum world, gaining knowledge actually affects how it behaves. So there is effectively no such thing as objective reality, then? That's one of the implications, yeah. This conversation gives you a peek into a very rare mind and reaches into the implications of quantum computing. For the full-length version, go to ConsciousMediaNetwork.com.